How you doing? My name is John Sikoris, and this is Sri Sikoris, and we're the owners of Titan Medical Center. guys it's your boy all right live from new york well, almost live i'm alive i think i think i'm alive i don't know anyway still got the shadow see it on my face it's from that fucking light over there but i don't know i don't know it didn't do that for a while i don't know what the fuck i'm gonna do anyway who gives a shit right looks like you got a dirty face um got the clipboard here guys all right and uh I want to go over some of your comments. I want to thank you guys all for your support. I hope you all had a fucking happy Thanksgiving. How was my Thanksgiving? The same as the past 59 of them, okay? Which, uh, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Yeah, I'm that old. All right, guys, listen. Um, I'm trying to think here uh, which question I should go for first. Let me, look at it. Let me look at the clipboard here. There's a lot of you guys are asking me some fucking wacky shit, uh... One of you guys, let's see here, where is it? Uh, okay, last week I talked about, you know, the, the, who was the greatest bodybuilder and all that stuff. You know, uh, again, according to Arnold, it'd be Sergio Oliva. He had the greatest genetics. You're not going to believe this, but, so, what's this guy's name? Right there, Celtic Pride. Again, I think he's asked me questions before, because that name sounds familiar. Either that or I've had fucking... Arguments with him on the internet. Who the fuck knows? But anyway, he wants to know who do I think has the best genetics or the best bodybuilder right now in bodybuilding. Now, we know that Phil Heath's body is incredible, okay? As a man, I'm not crazy about Phil Heath's cockiness and all that shit, you know, and his... That little fucking taking a bubble bath with a fucking cigar in your mouth and all that stuff, you know. Where I come from, that's that's being a momo, okay? You don't take bubble baths, bro. I took a bubble bath last time I was probably six years old, you know. I took a bubble bath. So, you know, we're Mr. Bubble. Any older guys, remember Mr. Bubble in the 1960s and shit? Mr. Bubble. Anyway. So, Phil Heath's genetics are absolutely, you know, they're, they're, look, we, they're phenomenal. They're phenomenal. But I'm going to tell you something. He's a little bit pinched in the shoulders. I was actually one time with him and Big Rammy. And they were both standing next to each other. And I'm going to be honest with you. Big Rammy was fucking, forget about it. Dwarfed him. Dwarfed him. And Big Rammy was dieted down. Okay, because that's when he won the night of champions. Uh, whatever he called the New York Pro. And what's his name? You know, Phil Heat. You know, was in the off season, So he was jacked. And uh, even, I was with uh, Branch Warren, and Branch Warren's going to me, look at the fucking size of him, Jesus Christ, look at his fucking shoulders. And we were both sitting there, and I'm telling you, it looked like a man standing next to a kid. But that's not the best genetics, okay? The best structure in bodybuilding is, you know, maybe some of you guys are going to agree with me, or not agree with me, Mr. Celtic Pride, who asked me this question. Best genetics, in my opinion, today, is Cedric McMillan, Okay? Cedric McMillan. He is the combination of Lee Haney, the best of Lee Haney, and the best of Ronnie Coleman. I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, come on. You got to be out of your fucking mind. Cedric's only won this. He lost that. This one B to be placed, whatever, in the Olympia. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, listen to me. You can give me all the, you know, Flexitron, all that shit. Do you know who the first person, first of all, to put Flex, uh, to put um, Cedric McMillan in the magazines was? Me. Ask him. Ask him. He once wrote to me when he was just a guy in the army and shit. And he sent me some pictures of himself. And I was like, holy shit. And I used to write, a, I used to write the column, MD.com. And it was up, I used to have success stories and up and coming stars and all that shit. And I put him in there. And I, don't know, I was like 2004 or whatever it was. And he was in the army. And he was training in, a, in like Iraq, I think it was. And he had all his broken down fucking old Humvees he was using as weights and pieces of like 
bomb and wooden fucking shit that was laying around that he made into equipment. Now, I'm going to tell you something. He was natural back then. And he was fucking more jacked than some of you guys are winning shows on steroids. Now, does that mean that his genetics are greater than anybody else? No. It just means he can grow. But his structure, bro, he could suck in vacuum. Let me tell you something. Who, who, little sidetrack here. Some of you older guys will remember this guy, who I knew very well too. We actually had words one time. But anyway, Johnny Morant, okay? He worked for me, did a guest posing, and I guess he didn't like... Me and him had an argument about how much time he spent on stage. But regardless, Johnny Morant, who was a fucking monster, could suck in that stomach. He was six feet wide. And he was tall. And his thighs were sick. Everything was sick on him. He just couldn't get it together, get shredded. But he was fucking another one who could have easily won the Mr. Olympia. If you don't know who he is, Google him. All right? Well, Cedric is one of the taller bodybuilders, too. He's taller than Phil Heath. His structure is is great. The problem with Cedric McMillan is Cedric McMillan. He's had a lot of issues, you know, especially being in the army and seeing what he's seen and being in Iraq and all that stuff. He he has anxiety, okay? Anxiety. Now, I could tell you a story. Robbie Durand, we were all working for muscular development. We were backstage, you know, after the show, Cedric McMillan won. I can't remember what show it was. And, uh, I think it was the one at Eugene Mission they thought he should have won. I don't remember where that was. But whatever, Cedric McMillan won a show. And he was crying in the hotel room. Crying. And said, I shouldn't have won. That's it. I'm done with bodybuilding. I'm going to quit. I should never have won that show. And fucking Robbie Duran basically smacked him. What's the matter with you, bro? You just won the show. What is, what's wrong with you? You know what I mean? Because he gets bad anxiety. Cedric is a good guy. I love Cedric. Okay, I remember the second time he was going back to Iraq, he still wasn't a pro bodybuilder, he wasn't nobody, he hadn't won a national, he hadn't won anything, and he wrote me a letter, and he said to me, listen, if I die out there, please, please just let everybody know, uh, you know, that I lived and that, I, I, you know, I was this great, you know, I was a bodybuilder, he didn't say great, but he, he said I was a bodybuilder, that, you know, I busted my ass, like, he, he wrote me this little, it was a message, it wasn't a written letter on a hand, but he wrote it to me. Because nobody knew who he was, but he wanted the world to know that he existed. And he was very scared. Okay, so I'm just telling you, Cedric McMillan, his, you got to give him a pass, bro. I'm just telling you right now, if he ever got his shit together, if he ever got his shit together. I've seen him backstage, I've been with him, and I've seen him, and he, he doesn't have that eye of the tiger. Sometimes, sometimes, he just, I can see him and he'll just be standing there, not even, he'll get up on stage and sometimes stand there and like not even flex, almost like he's trying to lose, you know what I mean? But if he had that fucking eye of the tiger and he had somebody really got him in phenomenal shape, nobody would touch him. I'm just telling you, he's that fucking good. His structure is that good. Cedric McMillan, even Arnold said it, I don't understand why a Cedric McMillan doesn't win more shows, okay? I'm telling you why. He has anxiety. Okay, I've been there. I've seen him. Okay, he has panic anxiety. The man was in Iraq, was working in the army. Well, you motherfuckers, well, you bodybuilders here in America who's sleeping in a nice warm bed, you know, banging your chick, eating good food. Oh, skinless chicken. He's eating meal replacement fucking, you know, MREs and all this other shit. Okay, he's eating gaboche. Okay, gaboche. That's what he's eating. And I'm just telling you. You fucking momos have no fucking clue what that man went through, okay? So, whatever he, all the stuff he went through, okay? All those things, that's, that's why he has trouble winning shows. It's his head. It's not the body. Because genetically, he could fucking wipe out anybody. If he ever gets his shit together, God help the fucking pros. No, you know, I'm just telling you that right now. So, uh, what was it again? Ask me. It's Celtic pride. So, Celtic pride, there's a lot of people going to disagree with me. They don't like me. You know, they don't like everybody's got their own fucking guy. But Cedric McMillan's genetics are sick, okay? And even the big guys in the sport, the people in the know will tell you that. The Cedric McMillan's genetics are fucking probably the best out there. And, and, and it's his head. Okay, because of what he's going through. I, I respect him, bro. My son, my son was Army Intelligence, you know what I mean? The special ops, all this other stuff. I mean, you can't, you can't, uh, 
you know, when somebody served this country, I have nothing but respect for him. Because even my, even my son, my father was a war veteran in a, you know, basically a Korean War. But my son's a war veteran. And I'm going to tell you something. I can't, uh, I wish I was a fucking one-tenth of man both of those two guys are. Because I couldn't handle it. I'd go fucking nuts. I'd probably fucking kill everybody around me. Especially your own fucking guys when they start acting like pussies and shit, you know. God bless the American soldiers. God bless fucking Cedric McMillan. Give him a fucking pass. His genetics are fucking great. It's his head. A lot of guys, it's their head. Remember the Lila Brada story I told you last week? About putting the fences in your brain? You get those fucking fences. You don't know what I'm talking about? Go watch my last show. Okay? Lila Brada was talking about that. Building those fences in your brain. You know, you can't go beyond those fences. As Cedric, if he could only go beyond those fences, forget about it. And Lee Labrada, if you're watching this, you remember telling me that. I know you do. And uh, Hunter Labrada, I like that kid. I watched a great interview with him with Dave Blumbo. I like that kid. I like him a lot, man. I like the way he thinks. He's a smart kid. His father was like that, though. His father. Lee. He's very fucking... If you knew Lee Labrada, see, I knew him personally. If you knew, if you knew Lee Labrada, he was a good guy. He's a good man. Like, just hanging out with him. He's a he's guy. He's one of the guys, bro. He's one of the guys. He doesn't act up. He's not a crazy fuck. You know what I mean? He's not from New York, and he's not a guinea like me. But hey, we can all be guineas. It's Joe Pietaro. Joe Pietaro's a crazy fuck. I love Joe. All right, anyway. Get me and Joe together. Forget about it. While I'm making this, um, by the way, as I'm making this video, I got sausage and peppers cooking. I make the sausage and peppers. I make the fucking food in this house. Because if I had to eat my girlfriend's shit, first of all, my girlfriend's Mexican. Everything she eats is fucking hot, bro. I can't eat hot food. I can't eat fucking spicy food. I'm a pussy. I'm a bleached guinea, okay? I don't like garlic. I don't eat garlic, and I don't eat onions. I know, I know. Some of you people get out of here with that shit. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't eat garlic, and I can't eat onions. None of that. Mm -mm. Bro, if I ate garlic right now, or onions, I burp fucking this time next week. I swear to God, it come up. I can't get it out of me. It's fucking, it kills me. And it fumes. I can't, I can't. I fucking can't, bro. My girlfriend will take a pile. She, she take a pile of that, you know, that red fucking pepper, the shit you put on pizza? The, the, the what they call it? Pepperoncino, or whatever, right? You pull that shit on there. She put it on his stick on everything, even eggs, everything, bro, everything. That and tapatio, you know, which is a Mexican fucking hot sauce. She'll eat them fucking hot peppers like they're candy, like that. Even my daughter, she hurt too. My daughter will fucking they go eat hot peppers like a fucking crave. My daughter, when she was a little girl, my boy Gary, who was my drug dealing partner, he, uh, he wants challenged my daughter. My daughter was like six years old, seven years old. He told her, I'll give you fucking ten dollars. So he did eat this pepper. It was a jalapeno. My daughter swallowed it. Asked for another one. She's... They're all fucking crazy in this house. But see, I can't eat like that. I can't even... I can't eat like that. I gotta really cook the peppers just right. Okay? What if fucking I get the fucking odds of it, bro? <sighs> even peppers. I love the way the peppers taste. I don't like garlic or onions the way they taste. But I like the way peppers taste. But the peppers fucking kill a gut, bro. You get fucking... Bonk. Bonk. Forget about it. I mean... Bro, but I, I lost my appetite anyway because my fucking ex... My, uh, my, my, my mother-in-law is out there too. She waiting to get her grimy mitts on there. That bitch will fucking... She eats all that hot shit too. I mean, come on. You know, she's from fucking Mexico. But she was standing there before... And she fucking, she sits there and she shows my daughter, she got a fucking skirt on. She lifts up her skirt, 
right? And believe me, this is fucking 350 fucking pound woman at like fucking 4'11". So, she shouldn't even be wearing a skirt. But she's wearing a skirt, she fucking takes the fucking phone. By the way, here's my phone. It's a flip phone. Okay? Here's my flip phone. Anyway. But let's make believe this is a fucking iPhone for a second. She takes her fucking... She takes her... Lifts up her thing. Fucking puts her fucking phone down. Takes a picture. And she goes, Snatch chat. You know? And I'm going, Snatch chat? Who the fuck would want to snatch chat with you? Are you out of your fucking mind? Some guy... Some fucko should be fucking murdered for that shit. Holy Christ, you know what I mean? I'm ready to stick a fucking apple in her mouth and roast her like a pig, but I wouldn't eat it. She's polluted. I'd rather eat a fucking wild boar than eat that. Anyway, so my appetite's a little fucked up from that. Snatch, chat! Whew. You have no idea. As a matter of fact, somebody just asked me. Who is this? Uh, Love Monster. Really? Love Monster wants to know why do I drink apple cider vinegar? Why do I drink apple cider vinegar? Because apple cider vinegar, or if you, you know, everybody today, they all drink that shit, but I've been doing it for a long time. You know, and Dave Palumbo and I used to talk about this back when we worked for MD. Okay, first of all, apple cider vinegar is, 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 is an acid, okay? And that, it actually helps to break down everything. It, it adds more acidity into your stomach because your stomach needs to be acid. It doesn't need to be alkaline, okay? Your intestines are alkaline, but your stomach is acidic. And most of the time, when I get the agita, you know what I mean? It fucking, it, you know, it repeats on you, okay? When I get that shit, I gotta, I gotta have something, you know, to fucking help get these stomach acids fucking back. Because as I'm older, bro, I'm 58, right? So I drink it for digestive purposes, okay? You know, and the mother has got phenomenal, like it's got natural probiotics and everything in it. Okay, great enzymes and, and, and minerals, but also for the liver. It detoxes the liver. Anything really bitter like that. I mean, you could even drink white vinegar if you had to. You know what I mean? I've done that when I ran out of the apple cider vinegar. But for the fucking liver, bro, apple cider vinegar is fucking phew, is unbelievable. Hey, you got come on, bro. You guys have seen me. Joe Pietaro talks, but I used to drink it right in front of Joe. I would drink from a whole bottle, burp, 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 like this, of the fucking Bragg's apple cider vinegar. And um, Joe would be like, ah, oh, Christ, ah, you know what I mean? So that's why I drink it, all right? So especially when I have food like that, I actually feel like it helps to break that down and digest it because it's acidic. See, as I'm older, I don't have the acid. I get the, you know, I get, like I said, I get the acid stomach, the agita, you know what I mean? I get that shit comes to me. And then I don't fuck or feel good, especially if I eat it, you know, Italian. Now, I'm, I'm ketoing it, so I don't like eating any pasta or any of that stuff. But I do eat the fucking sausage, you know what I mean? I love to... Remember Lee Haney? When Lee Haney was over my house, what he told my mother? I told you guys last week. Sausage. I just love Italian sausage, you know what I mean? He loves Italian sausage. And hey, come on, no fucking stupid jokes. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, real sausage, you know what I mean? Italian sausage and meatballs. Who doesn't like that, bro? Who doesn't like Italian food? Give me a break. Anyway. So I'm making the sausage and peppers out there right now. But I can't, I can't get my mole fucking out of here because she kills my appetite. I can have nice sausage and peppers right now. Okay. And I throw a little bit of the gravy in there. Sauce. To you fucking non-guineas from New York. But to us New York guineas. Joe. Joe Pietaro will tell you. Is gravy. So I throw a little bit of gravy in with the sausage and peppers. I don't just eat it, you know. I, I mean, I do eat it sometimes. Like, you know, when you go to a carnival and shit, you get the sausage and peppers. I eat it like that sometimes. But I like to have a little bit of gravy in it. My father used to like that. So, anyway. I'm a bleach skinny, though. I don't eat scongeli. I don't eat tripe. I don't eat uh, galama. I don't eat any of that shit. Just, I don't know. Just knowing what it is kind of goes against me. Oh, yeah, one other thing. See, I don't eat that stuff because... I don't know, I know what it is, and it just, I don't know, it just gets to me. But my friend, who eats sushi, I've already told you guys this a thousand times, I've told this story a thousand times, but bro, I have wars, I have fucking wars with Momos over sushi. You have no idea. I can't tell you how many wars I have with Momos over sushi, alright? My friend, 
has sushi, a sushi, caught a tapeworm. And nine or eight feet came out of his fucking ass. It broke off, went up back up his ass. And he got another nine, eight feet. He had like 18 feet of tapeworm total taken out of him. 18 feet. Okay? And if you guys ever watched a video of Evan Senapati where he's pulling, he's got the fucking cod steaks out there. And he's pulling, you know, the, the little fucking skinny worms out of there. The, you know, they actually show it. It's on the fucking YouTube. Go look for it. Evan Senapati eat, you know, cod steak tape worms or whatever the fuck it is. Little pin worms. And he's pulling them out of there. Well, I don't remember what he's using, tweezers or pliers, but I saw the video. Dude, I, raw fish is not meant to be eaten raw. Okay? Fish is not meant to be eaten raw. Give me a fucking break. I see you guys eating that shit. I have wars with God. Now, sushi, I love sushi. You know, that's why. It's good. You know, Gallimard is fucking squid. I, don't, I used to use that shit for bait. When I was younger, going fishing. You know, we get the fucking squid. We cut it up. And I can't, I can't fucking, it's like eating worms to me. You know what I mean? And tripe. I ain't eating no fucking cow stomach, bro. I ain't eating that shit. Sorry. I'm not eating that. Okay? Now I know, oh, tripe, ah, oh, tripe, you know, I ain't eating it. I said it like a white butt, like a, well, like a non-Italian. Tripe, but it's tripe. I won't eat that shit. I won't eat that fucking shit at all. No way, bro. No way. My friend's mother tricked me into that once. We were fucking sitting in me and a bunch of my guys, one's Puerto Rican, you know, no, nothing. We're sitting there, and we're eating that fucking shit. We're like, wow, this fuck is like chewy fucking pasta. You know, we're like chewing on it. It was weird, you know what I mean? Like like rubber bands and shit. And I said to my friend Mike, I said, hey, you know, what the fuck kind of pasta is? This is weird. And uh, his mother goes, that's not pasta. And my friend Mike's like, Shh, you know, because he wanted us to eat it, you know. And uh, she goes, that's tripe. And I go, what the fuck is tripe? And it's tripe, cow stomach. And I'm like, oh, get the fuck out of here, bro. Get out of here. I ain't eat no fucking cow stomach, cow brains. I don't give a shit. How many of you fucking people like that? Scongeli and shit. Like the snails. Ugh. Get the fuck out of here. When I was a kid, I used to eat all that shit. Clams, all that stuff. I won't eat that stuff. You know what I mean? Poof. My father ate all that. I don't eat that. My father didn't eat the, the scongeli or that shit. But we was big with the clams and all that other shit. But I, I can't eat that, bro. I'm a bleach skinny. You know what I mean? Any pasta, any end of the Italian food I eat, okay? I don't, I'm not really crazy about the fucking eggplant, though. You know, I like, I don't like eggplant either, you know. I'm, like I said, I'm a fucking bleach guinea, okay? Even though I grew up in an Italian household, my mother's Italian, my father's Italian. You know what I mean? My grandma, you know, all off the boat and stuff. I can't eat that. Sorry. Can't do it. And it's not ricotta. It's rigotta, okay? Rigotta, okay? Gabish. All right. Fuck, I don't know. I'm rambling about this shit. Uh, but you people, are, you're not from New York, and you're not from New Jersey, you're not from the Connecticut, you're not from the tri-state area, so you don't know. You don't know. You know, you're, you're, I'm an Italian and I live in Nebraska. Get the fuck out of here. You're not a guinea. You're bleached. You're so bleached. Forget about it. You don't even have any Italian left in you. Just moving out there. Okay, you gotta have, you gotta be around Italians, you gotta grow up in an Italian neighborhood with Italian food, you gotta go to Italian, though. you gotta be real guinea, you know what I mean? To understand what the fuck I'm trying to tell you. And it's gravy, it's not sauce. Just ask Joe Pietaro. Alright. We got a question here from Phil Heath's Pex. Really, dude? Really? That's the fucking name you come out with? Holy Christ. Anyway. He wants to know, do you have any Craig Titus stories from the Sound Factory? Fucking. Come on. I've already told a lot of stories from the Sound Factory. I don't know how many times you guys, what do you want me to tell you? Yes. Craig Titus and I, you know, we were friends. We weren't the best friends. We didn't, like, hang out every day. I talked to him on the phone, you know, this, that, the other thing. You know, when he'd be in town, I'd see him and stuff at the club. You know what I mean? It's ironic because I was also friends with King Kamali, who they didn't like each other. You know what I mean? At one point, they were buddies, and then, they, you know, shit happens, and then they don't like each other, you know? And I told you, we'd be in there with Bob Bonham and Victor Martinez, you know, uh... Uh, Fakir Mubarak would be there, uh, you know, there was a lot of guys, Robbie Lopez, uh, 
you know, when John Romano was in town, you know, he'd come on over, you know, we'd all, you know, we were all there together, bro, you know what I mean, we were all always there, but, um, you know, one of the, I mean, one of the stories everybody likes about, because Kelly Ryan was there, Kelly Ryan Titus, who was Titus's wife, you know, and, you know, everybody knows it's no fucking secret now that they used to do a little bit of the wife swapping and girlfriend swapping, and, you know, I, you know, she was in there, and we were, you know, I wasn't involved in any of that, bro. Nobody wants to swap shit with me. Dude, come on. Look at this. I'm an ugly motherfucker. Who the fuck, would, what girl would want to be with this? Anyway. That one out there. That's who. Anyway. But, uh, so, you know, we go to fucking Sound Factory. And, you know, in, in the bathrooms, okay, this is not like where you, some of you live, like in a Cornstalk, USA, you know what I mean? This is New York City, bro. Okay. What that means is the girls and the guys, they all in the same bathroom. You could be taking a shit in the bathroom, and in the next stall, there'd be chicks and dudes fucking around. Chicks, two girls fucking around. A guy and a girl fucking around. Three fucking girls and a guy. Three guys and a girl snorting coke, fucking doing whatever the fuck. They'd be in the next stall. You see their feet and shit, you know? Anyway, so I was in the bathroom, uh, and... Uh, you know, Kelly Titus and I were in there talking a little bit, just bullshitting. You know, I've already told the story. I'm like I'm tired of it, you know. But anyway, so she was in this she was in there, she was talking to me a little bit, you know, and then I went in there and I fuck she left and I went in there and I took a shit and when I came out, Victor Martinez had just walked in, right? And I was like in the first stall. It's, you know, he walks in, he goes, Wow, bro, stinks in here, you know what I mean? And I go, Yeah, bro. And I, li I lied. I said, dude, Kelly, T Kelly Titus was just in here, bro. She fucking took a shit in that store. You smell that? And he goes, oh, shit. Oh, shit. That was her. And I said, yeah. You just see, she just walked out, bro. That was that was her. She just shit like a, like a fucking banshee in here, you know? So anyway, you know. That's, I was like bullshitting him and stuff like that, you know, and he, he believed it. Of course, if he sees this now he rem and he remembers, he'll notice that, that wasn't her, it was me. <laughs> hey, listen, fuck it, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go, you know. Plus, I take all that fucking, back then I was taking all them fucking ephedras, and they kill your stomach, bro. They kill your stomach, when well, you gotta go, you gotta go, bro. There's no, there's no fucking holding that shit back, you know what I mean? Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Stimulants, fucking. Dude, let me tell you, you don't need laxatives. Take stimulants. Go take a fucking pre-workout. Okay, eat. And then take a pre-workout. Watch what happens. You're going to have to take a fucking dump. You know what I mean? And you know it. Got to drop a fucking, drop a squab right there, you know? But anyway. So, yeah, I was telling him, oh, bro, she shit so bad. You smell that? You smell that shit? And he's like, oh, man. Me and all those fucking kids and shit partying and all the next booth. Nobody gives a shit. They don't even smell it. They're so fucking fucked up. You know what I mean? They're so fucking lit. You know? But we go back outside and, you know, I see, you know, Kelly was sitting on actually Robbie's lap. Robbie Lopez's lap. And his girl was sitting on Craig Tice's lap. But Kamali was in there. And Titus was just staring at him like a dog. You ever watch your dog? Like if you if you got a dog and your dog's in the house and shit, right? And he sees another dog walking on your property and it sits there and the ears go up, the tail fucking comes out. And he's just standing there like this. You know, your dog and you know, my dog's ready to fucking pounce. If I open the door, he's going to fucking bolt outside. Well, you know, Bob Bonham's going to me. Hey, look, 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 look. Look at Craig. Look at him. He's fucking... Because you could see, just, you know, he just didn't, you know, back then it was really bad heat. And Kamali knew. Kamali knew. He said, hey, listen, I'm out of here. I got to get the fuck out of here. Like, bad, bad vibes in here, man. Bad vibes. Bad tension in here. So, they fucking, him and, uh, I think his wife, Barbara, who married him. And now, I don't, I don't, I don't know if they're still married. But anyway, she left. They left. And, um, you know. Dorian comes walking over, Dorian Yates, and he was fucking, dude, he was just feeling good. Let's just say that. He was feeling good. I like Dorian. Dorian's, Dorian probably, it's a Dorian thinks like I don't like him. You know what I mean? Okay. I just tell him fucking what I see, what I know, the way it is, okay? You know, I love Dorian. The only thing I didn't like is the whole fucking, we started that, the Holocaust is fake bullshit, and, you know, give me a fucking break. What do you get a bunch of fucking naked Jewish actors? Go lay in a pile. Let me fill you, let me, lay in a pile naked. 
You know? Don't eat for like three weeks. So let me fucking videotape you. Make believe you're a bunch of pile of dead bodies. Oh, that didn't happen. You know, get... Or they killed themselves or whatever the fuck. Get the hell out of here, fucking. Stop fucking doing drugs. You know what I mean? That's the only thing I don't like. Okay, is that. But otherwise, I think Dorian's a genius. A genius. And he comes out with pearls, you know, all the time. The stuff he says. But it's fun to, you know, he's in a club. He gets lit, bro. He likes to party hardy, you know what I mean? And I saw him, you know, he was, you know, I tell all the stories all the time about that shit, you know, in the fucking club that shiny disco balls playing and he's fucking got his hands up in the air to God, you know what I mean? Looking over Bob Bonham and I and everybody like, we're like, look at Dorian, you know, it's an ocean of club kids. But he used to get 10,000 people a night. You know, there's some fucking guy Anthony would hang out, he had his girlfriend and she looked like Britney Spears, you know, and she would fucking pop out her pussy and she had these fucking rings in her vagina, you know what I mean? Right in the club. Bob Bonham would be over there pulling on those rings and stuff. She show, yeah, look at it, look at the fucking pussy. And he's he, Bob's over there fucking pulling on the fucking pussy rings and shit. It was a fucking dude. That dude, that place was insane, insane, insane. Let me just tell you, I don't want to even tell you. So half the shit I'm not even gonna say because I saw shit with pro bodybuilders that was way more fucked up than I'm not gonna tell you. You know what I mean? Because then I'm gonna have fucking my friends are gonna become enemies. You know what I mean? But there's many a time I've been down there and we either get in fight to save somebody who's fucked up, you know, can't fight for themselves anymore because they're too fucking lit. Or I have to pick them up off the floor because they're too fucked up. I got to put them on a bar stool. You know, there's a lot of fucking crazy shit down there, bro. A lot of crazy. It was a crazy time. You see celebrities down there, you know, and the fucking music would be kicking. Junior Vasquez would be spinning, you know. I used to fucking, I met a lot of girls here, bro. Oof. I remember some chick fucking had no top on it. She walked right in and fell right into my arms. Just bang. And she was she was totally lit. Totally fucking lit. I don't she was either in a K hole or something like that. And I had I actually picked her up and walked with her, put her in a chair, and I told the bouncer, you better check her. Because she, you know, she's gonna fucking die in this club. As a matter of fact, in the tunnel, the tunnel, you talk to anybody that either worked at the tunnel or maybe cops that were down in the tunnel, in that in that precinct and shit. When they would, you know, we would go out and fucking, you go out in the morning, you don't come back the next day. I mean, you're in a club, you could be in a club for fucking 24 hours. But that shit open, opened up, you know, would close it, it, like fucking Sunday night, like, you know what I mean? It's open Saturday and fucking close a Sunday, you know what I mean? Sunday night. So you'd be there too, even in the afternoon, in the morning. People didn't, you didn't even know what it was outside. You come outside, it's fucking... 12 in the afternoon, was fucking bright sun, and people still in there fucking partying. But anyway, you know, the tunnel, when they would turn on the lights on fucking Sunday, they'd see kids, after they cleared out the fucking bar, they'd see kids sitting there and shit, and they were dead bodies, man, they overdosed. They would overdose right in the tunnel. They'd be sitting there, you know, in a the corner, they'd say, oh, look, there's a kid still here, get, get him up. And sure enough, it was almost every fucking weekend. I think more people died in the tunnel in that nightclub, had overdoses than anyone. You know what I mean? Even in Studio 54 where they'd have overdose. I was in Studio 54. I got thrown out of there. You know what I'm saying? That was a crazy time. I remember that. That was fucking nuts. It was, that was uh, crazy, crazy shit. You know? Best was, was fucking... You go to where I had to fight with Mark Wahlberg when you go to the, the limelight. It was fucking... Phew, that place on Freak Night, Wednesday nights. You fucking motherfucker. You fuckos from New York. You fucking momos. You know what I'm talking about. You fucking momos. Wednesday night. Freak night, bro. You, you know. You're in there. You're fucking. It was freaks, man. They had all the club kids walking around on stilts and shit. It was fucking insane. But I love that, bro. I love it. You know, I'm a freak. You're around other freaks, bro. It was like a fucking walking on side show. So the New York club scene is not like anywhere else, bro. Even L.A. See, this is a joke, bro. L.A.'s like... <laughs> LA's like going to a kid's party and shit like that. There's nothing. I know. I've been all through LA. You know what I mean? It's not the same. There's no place like New York. Now, maybe some places in Europe are a little fucking wacky too. But New York is ground zero for all that shit. Okay? Let's not fuck around, bro. You, the sound factory would open like on Friday and close on Sunday night. You go you go four in the afternoon and it's fucking... Dun, 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 it's fucking packed. And you got to stand in line to get in there. And you pay 50 fucking dollars and you pay... That admission just to go in there. Of course, I didn't pay, but I got lucky. You got to pay. It's not fucking around. Anyway, I right, something else. And finally, last little minute feedback here. Okay. 
Once I, you know, whenever I talk about it, I don't do marijuana, I don't smoke pot, you know, but my daughter's a fucking pothead like you won't fucking believe. Okay, everybody, there's so many of you people who smoke weed get insane with that and feel the need to attack me. Listen, you want to smoke pot, you want to be a pothead, that's fine. Okay, I'm just telling you, anybody I know that's had anxiety and they say pot takes away anxiety, they still got fucking anxiety. My friend's wife who had glaucoma, took fucking marijuana from a dispensary, still has glaucoma. It doesn't get her, didn't help. All she got was stoned. And if people say it doesn't affect you, if it makes you high, it affects your brain, it affects you. Okay, so you want to smoke pot? I, I'm all for it. I don't give a shit. They legalize it, whatever. Okay, I don't give a fuck. If, mar if, 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 if alcohol is legal, pff, why isn't pot, pot legal? I get it. Sim it down. Okay? It's my choice. But I grew up idolizing my father. I think I've told you before, my father used to make the only, used to make wine, never even tasted his own wine that he made. His father used to make it. And see, he would help him make it. But my father never drank. And he, my father was a decathlon athlete. Okay? And my father, too, my father would fight guys and kick guys' ass and would fight like MMA. He used to jump up and grab you around the neck. And stuff, so I, you know, like, take you down, like you see in the fucking WWE, you know what I mean? He, he, he was doing jujitsu, jitsu his own brand of jujitsu. you know what I mean? All right, we used to make jokes. My father's name was Paul, so we used to call him Paulie, you know, it's Paulie Jiu-Jitsu, you know what I mean? His jujitsu, because he would do shit, tie your arms up, bend your arms different ways, and he would fuck, fuck guys up, you know? He'd beat up my fucking high school football coach. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, but... I'm just saying, I don't party because I like to be in control, alright? So you guys with the fucking pot shit, simmer down. I like to be in control at all times, okay? I'm a control freak, and I've seen what a pot, uh, I've seen what, it, wait, sorry. I've seen what drugs and drinking and all that shit could do. So I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything, alright? No more about that. Please get off my fucking ass. And stop attacking the shit out of me just because I put down the, the almighty fucking marijuana leaf and everybody today's a pothead. Okay? You know? Sorry. So simmer down. Alright. Listen. I'm going to be doing a show. Country Crush. Alright? It's coming. It's going to be done any day. It's fucking about working out. It's pure working out. So we're going to do questions and answers on working out. We're going to get your training the Country Crush way. Done. Right. Okay? So, put down, you, you can put down questions, whatever you want to do. But this show here is sponsored by my crew at Titan Metal. Hey, listen. I'm not trying to piss anybody off here. Okay? You all know the Titan Medical. That's my place. My, my, I'm, I'm, I love what they do. They're legit. So, if you need shit, you go to Titan Medical. But you know what Titan Medical's best asset is? Just watching the videos that Sharice makes. Sometimes she puts her friends in the videos. They're all hot girls, bro. But forget about it. None of them are hotter than Sharice. Bro, Sharice is so fucking hot. Her and her friends, they're just looking at her and her friends. My test level goes up. I don't even need to get testosterone from fucking Titan Medical. My test goes up just watching Sharice's videos. Oh, yeah, baby. Listen, even she, even my girlfriend's like, wow, that girl, Sharice is gorgeous. And they got a kid, too. All right? So... If you go to Titan Medical, just watch Sharice's videos, bro. See, even if you don't fucking use the use their shit, it's fucking she's a hot, hot, hot girl. God bless you, John. I'd live in a bathroom a week just to smell one of Sharice's farts. It's the truth. Anyway, you want to stop fucking around? No more lists off the internet. No more bullshit. Go to Titan Medical, okay? Um, some guy. One of you guys asked me. Somebody here asked me about Europe. Somebody wrote to me, Guy, I got your email. I'm sorry, I don't know where it went. I, w I was going to try to answer you. If you're still watching this, email, it, email me again. One of you guys emailed me and asked me, I, he tried to get a hold of Titan Medical and they wouldn't give him, they said we don't ship to e Europe. Europe. This is what he told me. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't talked to Titan Medical. But we could we could try to talk to Sharice or John about that and we could see what's, what's going on. You know what I mean? Maybe there's a way. I don't know. Okay, I did get your email. I don't know where it went. It went to either, oh, even my girlfriend checks my emails a lot. So sometimes that shit goes to old mail, and then it gets fucking absorbed, you know what I mean? Or she deletes it, or whatever the fuck goes to spam. But I did get it. And if, 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 if you're out there and you're watching this, email it to me again. I'll forward it to them. We'll see what we could do if they can help you. When I say we, I'm not part of Titan Medical. They're not paying me. I'm not part of their, um, I'm not part of their staff. Okay, I'm not, 
I don't get a dime. If you buy shit, it's not like, look, I got a check from Titan Medical here, you know. Oh, you know, oh, here's my check, you know. By the way, this is a mask card here. Um, whose mask card is this? My mother. My mommy. Anyway. She died a long time ago, 20 years ago. Anyway, uh, you know, so... I don't get anything from Titan Medical. Some are sitting here fucking stroking their ass, all right? I'm just telling you, it's a legit place. And I tell guys all the time, you're fucking out of your mind. Even guys in my gym, dude, if you don't go to Titan Medical, go to a, go to, go to your fucking doctor. Don't get that shit off the street anymore. It's, there's too much bullshit going on. And they'll use you as a fucking little fish to tr get the big fish, all right? And you start getting that shit through the mail. <laughs> One day, ask Joe. Ask Joe Pietaro. He'll tell you. All right? It's no secret. He was he was a detective for NYPD, okay? Narcotics. So why don't you ask him? He'll tell you. All right? You guys already know that, so I'm not giving out any secret information. It's already out there about Joe. He'll tell you. Go to fucking Titan Medical. Get it done right. Stop buying shit off some fucko in the gym. Anyway, this is Greg Valentino telling you, God bless you guys that fucking living. The sausage of peppers, I can smell it. I gotta get out there before Snatch Chat fucking sticks that sh fucking grimy big fucking mitts in my fucking shit. She wants some, I gotta fucking portion that shit out. Cause she'll stick her fucking hands in there. Oh, look, a sausage. And eat it. And then stick her fucking grimy mitts back in my fucking. Now I won't eat any of that shit. You know what I'm gonna tell you? Stop fucking around. I love you guys. I'll see you next week, alright? Good things coming. A lot of good things coming. Keep your eye on this channel. Subscribe here. Click on the little fucking bell notification thing so you know when the videos are coming. All right, guys. Be good to your girl. Be good to your wife. Pay your fucking child support. I don't like deadbeat dads. If you're a deadbeat dad, get the fuck out of here. All right. See you next week. Medical Center, we are here to make you feel better, look better, and perform better. We're here to get you to your optimal levels in the most natural way possible. We are a boutique style clinic without the boutique style costs. All medications are monitored and prescribed by a physician. Let us help you get the results you've been wanting. Come to Titan Medical Center for the most cutting-edge therapies and the most current information on how to take the most natural approach to your health.